Hey everybody, me and Sam are hanging out outside here, goofing off in this beautiful warm October afternoon and Saturday. It's been a while since I made a video. Figured I would do one about the Buick since it's been a while since I've made a video about it. But we're gonna look around it. I think the last video I made, just doing a complete walk around was it of it was a long time ago. And I've done some things to it since then, and I'll try to be a little more in depth this time. But uh, let's go do a walk around and check it out. Just kind of walk around the perimeter up here first. I had this car probably five, a little over five years now. I got it in July of 2019. Traded a 1962 Buick and Victor wagon for it. I missed that car, but I had problems with it all the time. So this has been a pretty reliable cruiser since I've had it. It's a 1960 Buick LeSabre four door sedan in black with the, the red, black and white interior. These are similar to the 59s that came before them. The 59s, one of the main differences aside from, you know, the bumpers are different. The fins were pointier right here on the 59s where these are rounded. They didn't have, uh, the taillights weren't as detailed on the 59s. Uh, the trunks were very similar. Roofs, windows were exactly the same. Body lines were a lot different. And the main difference was the front. The 59s had the canted headlights where they kind of set in an angle, followed this wing here where these are flat like that. I have a 59 grill at home somewhere and some headlight buckets that I'm gonna put on the wall one of these days. I need to do that. But a lot of flowing lines, contours all over the place. That's why this car's still rough, because I don't know a body man around that could fix this thing straight enough to paint it again that I could afford. But uh, when I got it, it was pretty much an original paint car. Uh, you know, um, had some crust in the floorboards, no carpet in it. It was running and driving, but the brakes needed a lot of attention. Um, uh, what else? The body's pretty much the way it is when I got it. I've just cleaned it and polished on a few spots. You can see it has some rot down here in the lower portion of the front fender. Uh, the rockers are actually fairly solid on it, getting some rust on the bottom of the doors and behind the stainless trim. Somebody put a screw in the trim there to hold it on. Um, a little bit up right here. Uh, somebody's painted over some scratches in the door there. Lots of surface rust here and there, paint defects. Um, somebody had spray painted on this door as well here. Bottoms of the doors a little crusty here. Again, the rockers are fine, and that fender's not really that bad. It's got a little bit coming up in it, but all the pot metal trim is a little pitted on it, you know. But bumpers are, have seen better days, but it's a good cruiser. After I got it, I got it, just, you know, nickel and diamond little parts to make it more drivable, reliable. Um, biggest thing I've done to it is the air ride. Did all that myself. Um, I'll kind of go over more details of stuff as we go around the car. So I'll start here in the front here. The Harvey Ellis uh, vanity plate came on a truck. I bought some of them a while back before they went out of business. But uh, I kept it because it has the Chevy Buick logos on it. It was a Chevy Buick dealership. This car didn't come from that dealership. It, uh, but you know, it's, an, it's a neat plate to have on it. It actually came from Philadelphia originally from a place called um, Corletto Buick. It's got the little dealer badge right here. I was on the internet in a group for these cars. There's actually another guy that has one of these cars that came from the same dealership, a 64 door LeSabre. It was light blue with a white roof. But uh, 
we'll start with the hood. Actually, first I stopped with by these hubcaps. When I got the car, it had the original wheel covers on it, but all the paint had faded off. So all this center here was just stainless and I taped it off and repainted it with satin black to look like the factory caps. These tires were actually on it when I got the car, but they've held up pretty good. They're 215, 70, 15s. I would like to have like a 225, 75 on it with like a three quarter white wall, you know, a little bit bigger white wall than that, but tires expensive and these are still working. So we're gonna leave them be for now. Under the hood, we have the mostly original 364 cubic inch nail head V8. Los Sabres came with the 364. The Invictus and the Electras came with a 401 with a four barrel. This car has a two barrel on it. If I wanted to convert it to four barrel, which I kind of do someday, I'd have to get a 364 only intake because uh, the 401s and 425s are wider at, at the deck there, so they it won't fit. But uh, I can get a 57 or 58 four barrel 364 intake and it will fit this engine. Still has a generator on it. One of the first things I had to do to it to get it going, it had a little heat riser here that would open and close, I guess to make the engine warm up faster. But on any car that's been sitting forever, they get rusted shut. So I had to take this manifold off and knock that open and then I just left it open and uh, had my cousin do a little bit of welding on one of the broken ears on the manifold there. Uh, has new plugs. I just put plugs in it last night and I rebuilt the carburetor uh, last week. It needed it bad. It was leaking gas at every gasket surface. Uh, accelerator pump was worn out. Um, the floats were out of adjustment with the no, float. It just has one float and, uh, one of the idle control screws was, had a worn spot in it. But over the past five years, I've put uh, plug wires on it. Uh, you can see new vacuum advance diaphragm back there, new cap and rotor. Somebody had already put a Protronic ignition module in it when I got it. And at some point along the way, the uh, water pump failed on me. So I took all of it off and uh, uh, sent it off to uh, Centerville Auto Repair and had them rebuild it. So I've got a remanufactured water pump here um, with all the gasket stuff to put the uh, timing cover back on. Um, put fan belts on it at one point. About like any other old car you see, the heater hose is looped around because the heater core leaks. When I first got it, it was shooting antifreeze out into the floorboard. Um, I have a pretty in-depth series of videos about rebuilding this brake booster and putting a new master cylinder on it. That was quite an undertaking. I've never done that before. It was a little tedious, but it was neat, and I was happy that I put it back together and it worked. That's one of the first... That's probably one of the bigger things I've done to this thing. That's the first time I've ever rebuilt a carburetor before as well on this car. Luckily, it was a little two-barrel and fairly simple. There wasn't a lot of moving parts in it, so it went fairly easily. Uh, not too long ago, my radiator started leaking after having it repaired a few times, so I just went ahead and bought one of these eBay KKS uh, four-core aluminum radiators. I had to make some brackets to make it sit down in there but it fits good and the car does not get hot, never. I've got the little puke tank here made out of an old ski soft drink bottle. It's never overfilled any or never puked anything like that. And I also went ahead and added a fan shroud on it too because the LeSabres, if they didn't have air conditioning, they didn't come with a shroud from the factory. And uh, since newer ethanol gas runs kind of hotter anyway, I just went ahead and uh, added the shroud. So it's been running really good. 
all the plugs when i pulled them out they look pretty good and clean didn't have a lot of oil on them but the engine does have a little bit of blow by when it's running i don't know where it's coming from it could be normal for a non-pcv engine because it just has the you know the vents coming out of the oil breather caps on both sides and the road draft coming off of the valley cover and going down so maybe that amount of blow by is normal but it's enough that you can smell it and on you after driving it all day long not too keen on that um i need to get my wipers working that's next thing on my list need to investigate and see what all needs to be done to get that in working order again. But here it is under the hood. I've had this thing apart and together so many times. I'm pretty familiar with it, especially since I had a 62 before with a nail head in it. And there, it was very similar to this. It, it had a 401 with a full barrel in it. And that carburetor gave me fits the whole time I owned it, so... But this has been a pretty reliable engine. I'm gonna get this dirt dauber nest off of here. Alrighty. You can see my airlines coming up here, going across there, and they run into the interior there when I go to my valves. This is an aftermarket mirror. The other one was wobbling and really pitted and about to come off so i think that was like 20 some bucks it fits pretty good let me get my keys out of my pocket we'll look in the trunk here i need to do some adjustment on the trunk latch because um as you can see it doesn't line up quite right here and what i'll have to do i'll show you here in a second I just need to loosen these bolts here and slide that upward to adjust it. Slide this upward a little bit to adjust it, how it latches, then tighten it back up. But I might do that later today. But it has a huge trunk. You can fit a lot in there. I could probably fit in there. I'm six foot two. I wouldn't want to. But uh, got an old Navy suitcase there, there for uh, keeping all my tools and junk in. Got some chairs, got a spare tire and wheel, tarp. Here's the air management system here. Pretty simple, Not nothing too flashy. It's a Vire 485C continuous duty compressor, steel braided line, built-in check valve, running over to a three gallon tank. I have a 150 PSI pressure switch over in the tank, ran to my 30 amp relay right here and you can see the eight gauge car audio wire running back to the battery but uh that pressure switch just shuts the compressor on and off and you know i think it gets down to like a certain amount and kicks on and then it'll kick off when it gets up to 150. got a quarter inch supply line running up to my valves um let's see here all right, here we are on the side. Door panels are a little ratty, but decent shape for an old ratty cruiser car. I've got the little moon eyes spike window uh, or door lock caps on there. Um, Sammy barks every time I get in this car. He hates loud cars, and he always makes a fuss about it. See, he's over there being a turd right now. But big steering wheel here. I need to take it off and index it because when the wheels are straight, it's turned like that. I'd like to take it off anyway and try to redo it and repaint it black. I guess they fade to gray after a while. I'm not sure of the deal there. Polish this chrome the best I can. It's pot metal, so it once it gets pitted, it's, it's about what... You know, that's what you're stuck with unless you got some money to throw at it. And I don't. Not this car anyway. Here's my valves. Um, airlift set up. A dual needle gauge. Front, back, down, up. Busted most of the buttons off my radio. It actually still works if you're in range of an AM radio station to pick up. I did replace the speaker. It only has one right there in the dash. It's not the best, but it works. I need to see if my cigarette lighter still works or if I can fix it fairly easily so that I can put my phone charger in here. 
because I don't have a way to charge my phone when I'm driving this car. Uh, tiki shift knob, I actually carved that myself out of a scrap piece of wood, stained it and put some uh, urethane on it to keep it from rotting. I had this in my 62 Invicta wagon before this car and I kept it. Uh, got various HVAC, HVAC controls here. These vents, I keep them open all the time or it's too miserable hot in here to drive. Lights, dimmer switch down on the floor. Uh, need to get the wipers working so that switch has a use to it. Um, let's see. We've got ACC carpet in it. The car did not have carpet when I bought it. It's carpet, it was cheap enough, but it is not the best quality, not the best fit but it gets the job done and it bits, looks better than a bare metal floor. So I'm happy with it. This car had some rust in the front floorboards. I took the easy way out and popped rivet did some sheet aluminum over it and sealed it with the roof seam sealer and threw the carpet on it, over it and forgot about it. And I haven't had any problems. So there's that. Um, truck stop, Mexican blankets, seats car doesn't have any seat belts from the factory so i got me some ebay lap belts and put in here for the kids when they ride with me i love the, the unique pattern and the colors of the interior here this is an early run 60 because apparently later later they started painting the dashes red in the la sabers with red interior <coughs> so i think black means it's like an early production run no headliner. Eventually, I may try to use that blanket there to make a headliner for it. Um, that back luggage tray or whatever you call that area there. I need to redo that and do something with it. I just haven't thought about what to do with it yet. I just, the car's always driving. And as long as it's moving, I don't care too much about the cosmetics. Um, let's see what else. This is a neat feature of the car here. This car, this is actually, I think the 61s may be this way as well, but this is a mirror. That's actually not actually the gauges you're looking at. The gauges are down in here and all the numbers are backwards. And then when they, you see them on the mirror, they're in the right direction. And you've got this here to adjust the angle of the, the mirror to kind of see, I guess, you know, where you want to look at it. Yeah. Um, clock what i think was an optional feature it doesn't work um these cars are supposed to have a gas pedal that mounts off of the floor and comes up and rides on this here but I've, i have a gas pedal and i have the bracket for it but there wasn't really any floor left to mount it to right there and that sheet aluminum is really isn't solid enough to do anything with either so we we're doing it this way but that's all right um the dome light still works mm, let's see here <clears throat> get out and walk around here real quick for the air ride i have uh firestone 2600 pound bags up front uh, with the the cup style brackets from twisted images over in oklahoma um in the rear i have uh airlift 2b7 2600 pound style bags mounted directly on top of the axle with a cup style bracket holding it up into the spring pocket uh new sway bar bushings in it uh new rear shocks in the back i did those a while back um as far as future plans, just keep the thing running, fix the steering wheel, and who knows? I've always got a wandering eye, and I've had this thing five years, which is the longest I've ever kept a project car, and I've, I'm itching for something else. I just haven't found the thing to quite scratch that itch yet. I'd like to have another station wagon, maybe something late 50s, early 60s GM like to have a 60s Oldsmobile or Pontiac or like a later 63, 64 Buick would be neat, like a Wildcat or like a 55 through 57 Chevy truck. I like those. 
maybe even some kind of like 60s or 70s C10. Can't make my mind up. But I just haven't seen the right thing come along yet to justify getting rid of this one. And anytime somebody's offered to buy this one, they always want to lowball me and I don't have to sell it. So I still have it. But there it is, the 1960 Buick Sabre four-door sedan. Beautiful lines from any angle. Fun to drive, reliable cruiser. Nail heads are just cool engines, I love them. There it is. Thank you all for following me around for 20 minutes flapping about an old rusty black car. See y'all later.